Let's now look at how we can define some simple functions in Haskell. Just like simple values, functions themselves all have type signatures. Type signatures for functions follow the template I've placed here. First comes the function name. Then comes the double colon. Then comes the type of the first parameter to the function. Then a dash and a greater than sign, which is supposed to represent an arrow. Then the type of the next parameter. And that repeats until you have specified the types of each of the parameters to the function. You then end with another arrow and type with this final type representing the return type of the function. Every function has at least one binding. Later on in the course, when we come to pattern matching, we will see functions which have multiple bindings. But for now, all our examples are simple and will have only one binding. Take a look at the template for a binding which I've placed here. For each parameter type, which is declared in the type signature, there needs to be a parameter name given in the binding. The parameter names come after the function name and are only separated by a single space being between them. This is known as juxtaposition. Let's now take a look at an actual example. There are two parts to the function definition here. The first, at the top, is the type signature and the second, underneath it, is the binding. According to the type signature, the function takes two ints and returns an int. So we know there are two parameters to the function which we need to name. In the binding, we have the function name and the names we want to give to the parameters all separated by a space. The names could be anything, but I've just given the names A and B for simplicity. Then the logic in the binding simply uses the inbuilt plus function to add the variables A and B together. Now let's look at actually calling the function. You can see here that the function is called by placing the values we want for the parameters next to each other. So for the first call, a becomes 202 and b becomes 6 to give us the value 208. And for the second call, a becomes 89 and b becomes 32 to give us the value 121. So for those who are learning Haskell after learning another programming language, like C or Java, there are a few things to note here which may seem a bit weird to you. First, the type signature gets its own line. In those other languages, usually the type is placed next to the parameter and the return type is placed before the function name. This style is different, but not difficult. Now you have been told how to read the type signature, at least for the simple case, it should all make sense. Second, there are no brackets in the binding, or when we call the function. In other languages, to call a function, you need to place the arguments to a function in a comma-separated list with brackets. This is not needed in Haskell. In Haskell, the only time you need brackets is if you want to group an expression to help remove any ambiguity, not for actual function application. This style of placing the variables next to each other, separated only by a space, is quite common in functional languages, and as I've already said, is known as juxtaposition. Let's take a look at another example. If we look at the type signature first, from the type signature, we can see that the function is named add three doubles and takes three parameters, which are all of type double. It returns a double as well. From this, we know that the function binding should have three variables declared. So if we look at the binding, we confirm that this is true. There is the function name, then three variable names for the parameters next to each other, separated by a space between them. Then there is the function body, which just sums all of the function parameters. And you can see here that we call the function in the same way, passing each argument with the space in between. A quick note on brackets, they are only needed when you need to perform grouping in a compound expression, or to remove ambiguity. So for example, here we are calling the function add two ints and passing the first parameter of 50. However, the second parameter we want to pass in is the result of calling add two ints again. And so we group that call to add two ints in brackets, so there is no confusion. If we did not provide the brackets, the compiler would throw an error because it would think you are applying the function to four arguments instead of two. Another note on unused parameters in functions. In the case where a function takes a parameter, but the parameter is not used in the function body, we can replace the name with an underscore. So in this case, we have a function which, when given a three tuple, will always return the first element in the tuple. There is no need to provide parameter names for the other elements in the tuple, and so we just use an underscore instead. In certain cases, this can increase clarity and understanding, because by immediately looking at the function, you understand that the parameters are intentionally unused. 
You call the function like normal, as you can see here. There is a lot to cover on functions, and we will look at them more closely in later sections, covering topics such as partial application and currying. But for now, I've given you just enough information to understand the basics. This video is a clip from a longer video for beginners starting with Haskell. Check that out if you would like to see all of the content. Also check out the entire Introduction to Functional Programming with Haskell course on the LIGO Learn channel. See you next time.